And the reviews that kept coming up about Light in the Piazza, people kept saying over and over and over again, thank goodness music has returned to musical theater. And, of course, they named some of the very commercially successful, more rock musical or modern music, uh, the belter type of musicals that have come out in the, uh, since 1990. And I was really surprised because Light in the Piazza, uh, half the songs are in Italian, it's very classical, and I thought, you know, this, it's very interesting to see that the commercial successes are the big belter musicals or the, the very modern musicals, and then you have people who still want that that classical or trained sound. Actually, I'm going to be doing a show on training. Do you find that people are kind of confused as they don't know which shows to be their favorite or they really like one show but they're not up to snuff, as it were? Like they know they can't perform it. Do you run across that in the university level? Well, I think every person, you know, uh, is at a certain point in their life when things happen to them or when they're – influenced and I always love to think that ideally great art changes a person's life and I don't want to sound uh, too romantic about that but just to give you an example I took a friend of mine from Taiwan years ago to New York uh, he's a doctor uh, extremely just extremely intelligent in public field of public science and research and all of that. He had never seen a musical and I took him to see Les Mis. And at the oh, end wow. I heard at the end I heard him sniffling and fighting back the tears. And when we <laughs> got to the restaurant at the end he said, My life will never be the same. And he explained and that's that is a now not everything's meant to do that, you know. But we do hope that some of the 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 stiffer ones are the you know and then, of course, our life can be changed from just sheer laughter and comedy. So I don't know how to answer that except that at different my, – my students that I teach don't even know who Fred Astaire was, you know, not at first. They, they, go, about as back as far, yeah. they go back about as far as the Phantom. And our students here are very sophisticated. They're all from everywhere, you know, but New Orleans. In fact, they hear my accent and think I'm – going to one of the most expensive schools in the United States to, to be taught by this man who has this southern accent. But anyway, uh, you know, it's where they are at that time in their life. And, and until they prepare themselves socially, you know, physically, uh, mentally, everything for what they see and extend that, then everybody has a different take on it, you know. You I know went, My next – go ahead, sorry – I went to see Wicked because I try to see everything. I mm-hmm. thought it would never be over, but other people love it. So, And I'm only thankful for one thing. The lines are around the block because it's, it keeps musical theater alive. Yeah. Right. I, actually, my next, my next question was going to be, do you think there are certain shows that um, that you've done? This is for Sandy, too. Sandy, jump on in. Um, that, do you think that there are certain shows that, that have happened at moments in your life where you experienced an art imitating life dynamic? Oh, yes, all the time with me. <laughs> I think so, all the time. What about you, Sandy? I feel such a profound, almost religious connection to theater mm-hmm. that it, it's hard for me to decipher. Right. I, I look right. and feel and search for it because I'm longing for the intimacy, the connection, the music to come in my pores. I'm searching for excellence. I'm searching for beauty. So there, I find that in the theater. And I may not always find it in an entire show. I may find it in one song. One whereas moment. People will leave the musical that night, let's say, and they'll say, well, they thought it was awful. But if there was one song or one scene, um, I'm usually pretty happy because I so need it. I'm like a plant needing sunlight. So, And I teach musical theater, but at the high school level, I'm at LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and the Performing Arts, the FAME school. Yes, the FAME High School. Yes. I was going to get to that. I wasn't so leaving you out. I have such talented kids that one song in one other person's hands might not speak to me, but in some young child's hands, somehow or other, the song is reborn. So I find connections daily in my life that inspire me, that 
make me question how I've always looked at a scene or a musical. Um, they did ragtime two years ago at the school, and I had nothing to do with it. I literally was the house manager and ushered. The production was so moving for these kids, and I know some of the parents. It was double cast, and I'm, we have 1,100-seat house. I think we did eight shows all sold out. You matter of fact, people fighting to get in. And um, the audience members, I mean, you could hear a pin drop at the end. And I think one of the reasons it worked so especially well is there's a role in there of a of a young woman who who tries to get rid of her baby, and another mm-hmm. woman takes that baby in and um, is saved. And and then later on, this woman is forgiven, and we go on and we end up loving this woman. But as a as a woman giving up your child, when I first saw it, I had great problems now singing along with her in the rest of the show because she had done something so heinous. But in the arms of a 16, 17-year-old, mm-hmm. it took mm, on a yeah. whole, She was in over her head, and I gave her the world because of it, it, of forgiveness and support and love, and I went along completely. And the production was, I mean, every night I felt it resonated, and, and I, I felt such a connection with this incredibly eclectic, diverse, uh, socioeconomically diverse also audience, all moved by the same thing that we all shared up on that stage at night. I'm sorry, that's like magic. That's religion. That To me, that's like going to church. It's- Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, people, kids today, teenagers today, people in their early 20s, they look to technology to give them that kind of connection. And we're using that kind of connection right now, but you cannot get the same kind of connection from a piece of technology that you get in that that reciprocal energy that happens between an audience and a performer and then back in this round robin of, of energy when magic is, is happening and it's a moment and you can't ever recreate it. So that w- that's just a powerful story. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and actually I wanted to ask you, and it kind of goes along with that, is that do you think that we gravitate towards certain shows in terms of liking or not liking uh, certain shows at certain times of our lives and or are we just grateful to get cast <laughs> at times? Do you think that we that we move toward certain shows for certain reasons? Mm. I, I really, I, I don't really know that. I, I, I don't know. I can't answer it. What do you think, Michael? Um, I, I think probably I do to some degree because uh, – to give you an example, when, when you were talking about ragtime, and I remember when I first saw that on Broadway, I was like you. I had some very, uh, you know, adverse, but yes, about it, and uh, just all of the blood and you know everything that goes on. And I know it's it's a you know it 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 needs to be done, but exactly the same thing happened to me. And I understand what you're talking about. About four the year before we had the big Katrina. That summer, I did a Bernstein festival, and I brought in uh, we the university brought in Barbara Cook for a workshop, and we just wow. had all these one things. But we did Candide, and you know mm-hmm. I heard yeah. that yep. uh, you can't you know when you were talking about composers and you know I tell my students constantly they're like the sponge and until they can just every day look for something to nourish their soul. I mean, that's what Candide's about. And I sat there and I listened to the Bernstein, who was an amazing man. And when I heard Debussy and when I heard Boyd, when I heard all of the people he was influenced by, how beautifully it worked in that music. And then at the end of the show, when the orchestra drops out and they say, they sing about making your garden grow, a cappella, I could sense... I could sense in the audience at that moment, at that time, the pin drop that we, that we were just talking about. And that happens, like you say, for all of those people at one time. And that's yeah. unusual. That's yeah. live theater. 